Hi guys, this is Lila. Welcome to my channel Lila Web Dev. In this video, we will learn about the concept that is nothing but angular hydration. So what is this hydration concept in the angular? Not only this angular in react or Vue.js, everywhere you will be having this hydration concept. So what about this hydration concept? Let's try to understand it carefully. At some point in your journey, when you are trying to mastering the angular, you may have come across the term angular hydration. So this term, so you will be familiar or somewhere in the recent times when you are learning about the angular SSR or if you want to become master the angular means you will be able to listen this term angular hydration. In brief, if I want to say angular hydration is the process of restoring a server rend server side rendered application on the client side, helping to enhance performance by eliminating the need to recreate the DOM nodes. So this is the main thing. So what is this? Angular hydration is the process of restoring a server server side rendered application on the client side. So restoring a server side rendered application in the client side, helping to enhance the performance, eliminating the need to create the DOM nodes. So that is what I will try to explain you clearly about this one. What is this concept? While Angular hydration brings several advantages, it also comes with a certain limitations and potential challenges also. So when you are trying to use the angular hydration, it will give you advantages also. Apart from advantages also, it will give you some limitations and potential challenges. So we will explore about this angular hydration in detail, including its benefits, constraints and the best practices for using it effectively in your angular application. Let's try to understand it. So normally what is an angular hydration? So now we will try to have a definition about this one. Angular hydration is the process of reactivating server side render application on the client side. So here I told you, so restoring or reactivating something like that. So now when you are trying to use an angular SSR, so I will try to explain you clearly. So if you are having a paint or something like that, I will try to explain you clearly where we will be using this one. Let's say that here you will be having a client. Okay. So this is the client. So now the user types, he makes a request. Okay. So he makes a request to, to here. So now here our server side render application will be there. So here our node servers or something like this, it will be there. It will receive the request and it will process the uh, request, HTTP request and all those things, whatever it may be, it will process the request and it will prepare the HTML for this one. Okay. It will prepare the HTML and that HTML will be sent here. This is called as an initial HTML. Let's assume. So the HTML data will be sent to the client and now here, and now here the browser so the browser will start executing so now what it will try to do first it will render that initial html so the html content will be dis displayed in the browser now it will also send you the javascript links also so which whatever it may need to load so now it will try to make the request to download the javascript resources so when the javascript resources got downloaded so what it will try to do so here it needs to prepare the html that is nothing but an interactive to the events and all those things so then what it will try to do it is it will destroy these all the dom nodes and again it will create an another html it will create an another html again it will create an another html which is an interactive one okay so which is an interactive one means so responding to the events like click events and all those things so this the javascript html will not respond but here when the javascript uh, when the javascript loads so javascript loads and it try to prepare all the dom nodes and all those things so the, the browser what it will try to do it, it will destroy all it will destroy all the DOM nodes and it will reap and it will <coughs> render the HTML with an interactive thing. So here destroying the DOM node again creating the HTML here it will cre create UN UI flickering. So that means enter the output will go away and again the output will come. So that means immediately it will happen. So in order to prevent this scenario in order to prevent this scenario. So we will be using the hydration concept okay what does this hydration concept will do so the hydration concept simply does in nothing so here instead of destroying here so when the javascript got downloaded instead of destroying this all dom nodes okay everything it will try to match the dom nodes and all those things so whatever the things are there it will keep the html like this only and it will match the dom nodes and it will recreate those things instead of destroying and creating so it will match those dom nodes and it will keep it like that only so that is the benefit of this angular hydration. So I will try to explain you one by one. So this is the main concept in the angular hydration where this hydration actually is useful. So when a client makes a request, so the server, the node server will give you the HTML and this HTML will be rendered in the browser. 
and now the javascript scripts and all those things is downloaded when the javascript scripts are everything is downloaded means so it needs to attach all the events and all those things to the html so whatever the events it is getting attached means then it will try to delete all the nodes and all those things and it will recreate it so there the ui flickering and all those things will happen which creates which 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 give you in the core web vitals so core uh, core web vitals it will give you the performance thing first byte and all those things largest content paint and all those things you will get a worst behavior so for that reason so we will be using the angular hydration so let's try to use see, see some more about this one so here let's go here so here that is what i want to explain you about the hydration concept so angular hydration is the process of reactivating a server side render application on the client side so already the server center application is there right it will reactivate on the client side so instead of destroying everything and creating a new dom or new document so it will reactivate that server side application only it involves reusing the dom elements rendered on the server so whatever the dom elements that has been created on the server preserving the application state transferring any data already fetched by the server and other related tasks the goal of hydration is to boost performance by reusing the existing dom nodes by reusing here try to understand the important points hydration is to boost performance by reusing the existing DOM nodes. So whatever the DOM nodes that has been sent to the server from the server to the client. So by reusing the existing DOM, reducing the need to regenerate them. So it will reduce the need to regenerate again and preventing the UI flickers during the transition. So that is the main concept behind the Angular interaction. Imagine you have an Angular application that shows a list of blog posts. To enhance the initial load speed and SEO, you choose to implement the server side rendering. So that's a common thing. So now when a user visits your web page, so when a user tries to visit your web page, the server generates HTML content, including the list of blog posts and sends it to the server user's browser. So here, when a user visits your web page, the server, <coughs> the server, the node server generates HTML content, including the list of blog posts, everything it will try to get and sends it to the user browser. Without hydration, what will happen? The browser would receive that server render HTML displayed to the user and then replace the DOM when Angular initializes the client side application. So when the Angular initializes the client side application, everything will be replaced again. So this process could cause a visible UI flicker and harm performance metrics such as first input delay and also the largest contentful paint. So this, this one will create issue. So this, this will create an UI flickering thing. So with the angular hydration, if you try to use the angular hydration enabled, instead of replacing the DOM, the client side angular application attempts to align the existing DOM elements with the application structure at the runtime only. So that is the main thing. It will try to match the existing DOM elements with the application structure. By reusing these DOM elements, Angular hydration helps prevent UI flickers and boost the performance. That is the main thing. For example, let's say that the server render HTML structure for the blog boards looks like this. So here, div h1 block title, ul post1, post2, post like this. Let's say it looks like this. So when Angular hydration is enabled, the client side Angular application would recognize that existing DOM structure, match it with the application structure and reuse the DOM nodes instead of recreating them. So that is the main thing. As a result, the user would not see a UI flicker and the performance of the application would be improved. So that is the main concept of this Angular, Angular uh, hydration. To enable the Angular hydration, you need to import the provide client hydration from the Angular platform browser and add it to your application bootstrap providers list or your root app modules. If you are using a module concept means, then you need to provide it in your app.module.es file provider list. That's it. So now what here I'm trying to do it is so the prerequisites for implementing for using this Angular hydration means first of all, you need to have a server side rendering application requirement. Angular app must be enabled. So server side rendering uh, app must be enabled and also follow the Angular SSR guide to set up SSR in your application. So if you don't know this SSR guide means so you can follow that one. And the goal is ensure that your application is rendering on the server before enabling the hydration. So that means the application should be rendered on the only for the server side application only it will be angular hydration will be implemented enabling the hydration so this is the brief introduction or the brief concept of this angular hydration so in the next session onwards you will try to see what are the limitations that are available in the angular hydration and how to maintain the application so in order to make the hydration to be uh, to be uh, enabled in that one so let's try to understand that one in the upcoming videos so hope you understood about this angular hydration concept in the ang uh, in this angular ssr how it will be used so hope you understood about this one if you have any doubts or any suggestions please post the comments below to this video and if you like this video please do support me by subscribing to my channel thank you